All right, so we're going to be building um, a character, um, and we're going to use class-based structure, okay? Um, so there's a couple things that we need to make sure that we have to have um, as we progress. We're going to have to have a player class that is responsible for updating itself and for drawing, okay? Um, we also want an animation class that we can use to add animations. Animations and play animations for the character for each state that they're in. Characters state. Okay. Um, the states that we have for the player, we're going to have um, an idle that we'll start off with. Then we're going to have a run state and a jump state. Okay, now there's a couple things that we need to think about though with a jump state. We don't want flappy bird type motion, so that means that we can only jump when we are in contact with the ground. We jump when we are touching the ground. Um, and we're going to have to implement a simple physics based machine. Physics uh, engine. Okay. Um, so that's all the stuff that we're basically going to be doing um, here. Uh, this will mirror stuff that we cover in class. Okay, so in order to create a character class, um, what we're going to do is we're going to come here. We're going to go to click on the uh, little drop down. We're going to create a file, and we want to name it. When we create a class, you should always name with a capital. Um, for the start um, and it's you know proper naming convention because it's a class that's how we recognize the difference between variables um, and classes so player.js um, js is the javascript file um, so after we have this we also have to go to our index and we have to copy this line because we're going to have to tell the program to load it okay now the order does matter if I'm going to be using this player class in the sketch, and the sketch is basically where my game would be, I have to have that file loaded before I get to it. So if I have animations that I'm loading for my player, then those animation, that animation class would need to be loaded before my player. Okay, I got to make sure that I'm spelling it exactly the same, capital P, okay, um, and that's it. So now we can save and we can go to our class. Now, to create a class, the um, keyword is class, and then I need to give the class a name, so I'm going to write it the same as my file name. Okay, now um, there are some parts that we want to make sure. When we create a new player, we want to make sure that we are passing in the information that the player is going to have. So when you think of a class, think of it like a template or like a factory that I can use to create more of these things. And so I can say what requirements or parameters I need to be able to create a player. So some things we can have it auto-calculate, um, other things we might want to pass in. Um, so while we're doing this, we're going to rapidly prototype. So we're going to determine what things need to go in there to do the base minimum of what we're trying to do. As we need to add more features and more things to it, then we can add um, additional requirements. Okay, so to the very first one that we have is a constructor. And the constructor, all it is, is this is what is called, um, think of it like the setup, but for a class, the constructor is what is called first. And so then you can pass any values that you need. So um, what we're going to do for our player, our player is going to need a couple things. Um, and I am having us do it with vectors. Vectors is really, um, it's uh, like another way of us saying, you know, position. When we, we've been writing like this, X and Y components, I have a position. That's my X, that's my Y. We're going to do the same thing. But now we're going to do vectors, um, which ultimately will kind of pair them up. Uh, but as soon as we convert to vectors, everything that we're using that touches another vector needs to be a vector. Okay, so um, for the base of creating my player, I want to have a position, I want to have a speed for my player, and I want to have a jump string. Okay, now inside of here I need to assign those um, to the attributes for the player. So this stop. Uh, 
position is going to be that position that I'm passing in so that I have a hold on it because these are temporary parameters. They're only going to exist inside of the scope when it's called. So I want to create more. So this dot speed is speed. This dot jump strength is the jump strength that I'm passing in. Um, now we want a couple other things. We're going to want to have gravity so that our player will fall back down to the ground. And we could pass this in and have some t common type of gravity. Um, in this case, though, uh, we are just passing in so that we could have gravity specifically applied for our player. Okay, now the gravity. A vector means that it has an x and a y component. Okay, on our gravity, since it's pushing straight down, we have no x and y component. But we do have... Um, the y component where it's pushing us down and that would mean that it's a positive value so we could start by you know maybe putting our gravity at two okay we're going to need a couple other stuff because we're going to be building a physics engine we're going to need to have some type of velocity um, that is going to have to be computed for the player and this is what is going to tell our player where um, where we are when we apply that velocity. The velocity is going to be like the composite forces um, from gravity and from us jumping and anything else. We will end up having a velocity calculated that will determine our position. Okay. Um, we also want to do um, maybe a radius for our player and give it a specific size. And the difference between this and simple objects is that um, each line is created as we're moving. So before, with the simple object, we were not done with the object until we hit the end of the um, code block. Um, here, we can use each one as we want. So this dot size could be calculated from the radius that we just did times 2. Okay. Um, we could also calculate to make things easier the bottom of our character so that we could use that to determine things. So we could say this dot bottom is this dot position dot y plus this dot radius because it's all calculated for us. Um, and uh, ultimately we're going to need to have a flag to tell us when we're on ground and we could start that as true um, and that will end up getting implemented. So this is what I want to create um, all of the variables that I feel are important, at least for right now, when we create a player. Um, so after we create a player, which that's what that is, that's what the constructor is, then we want to start building some functions, okay? Our player should be able to move. Um, our player should be able to update. And our player should be able to display. Display. Okay. At a minimum, that's what we should have, okay? Um, and actually our uh, simple physics engine. So we're just going to call it add force, and it's going to require a force. And um, this is inside of here. So if we look at force equals mass times acceleration, we've learned that before, but for most computer games, our mass is going to be equal to 1. So um, really, our force is our acceleration. Okay, so we can say that acceleration is our force. If we wanted to be more specific, yes, we could have a mass so larger objects have um, more force applied to them. Um, in this case, though, this is really all we need. So a force is our acceleration. Okay, acceleration motivates where we are in terms of our velocity. When you think of a race car, when you push the gas down, we are applying acceleration, which ultimately will help us reach our composite velocity. So the car being pushed back by friction from the road, from air displacement, um, from the front of the car, and then us pushing the gas pedal, all of those together will give us ultimately a velocity. So what we want is we want to access our velocity. That's why we didn't have it start at zero here. It's going to start at zero when we create the player. And then we can pass in. So we're going to add whatever that, uh, that acceleration is into our velocity. Okay. Now our velocity motivates our position. 
if I'm driving 60 miles an hour, after one hour, I know that I'm 60 miles uh, farther than where I started. So that means my position is going to be, um, I need to add the velocity. Now with vectors, I can't do this like what I've been used to. I got to use some vector math. Um, and there's some built in, if I look at the references for vectors, Okay, here's where we create a vector, we give it the points, but we can actually add those points to it. Let's look at what we have access to. If I look at P5 vector, um, we have magnitude, we have heading, which is things that we're going to want to be able to use, but then we have this. We can add um, X and Y components to this vector. We can um, subtract X and Y components. We can multiply so we can do all of that stuff. Um, so we're going to be using some of these to be able to calculate um, different things using vectors. So instead of us saying plus equals, we're going to say, because the force that we pass in is going to be a vector, our acceleration is going to be a vector, everything that we're doing in this has to be a vector. So I'm going to say dot add, and then I'm passing in the vector that I'm adding to it. Okay, so this is taking that acceleration and it's adding it to that velocity. Now I'm going to take that velocity and I'm going to add it to my position. Okay, this is the composite of my forces. Okay, acceleration um, we're using as a temporary locally scoped variable because once we get out of this add force, we don't need it anymore, but we are holding whatever our composite for our velocity is. Okay, um, for our display, we want to just display. So right now we could just display simply a circle but we want to display based off of our position, but our position is a vector. So we need the X component of our vector. We need the Y component of our vector, and then we can use the size. Okay. Um, for our, for our update. So right now we haven't seen anything. Let's, let's go ahead and make it so that we can actually see something. Um, I see that I have changes. I'm going to go ahead and save. All right. Let's create a player object. So here we're going to say player equals new. That's the keyword player um, so that I can use that class based structure. And then I have to pass everything in. Okay. So I want to have my player created at the center of the screen. So I'm using that as a vector with divide by two height divided by two. Okay, so that is the first piece. The second piece would be my speed. So let's say it's five. And then uh, um, I need to do my jump strength. So my jump strength is going to be what is propelling me. It's going to be like an impulse. I'm jumping up. Um, so that means I have no X component for that, but I am going up. So I want to create another vector for that. Um, it's going to be zero for my X, but for my Y, I'm going to have some type of negative jump height. So that's what's going to propel me up against my gravity. So this creates my player, which means now I could just say player dot display and we should be able to see something. So let's go ahead and run. There we go. That's our player. Okay. So now um, almost everything that we do can be directly in this player class. So we are effectively encapsulating all of our inf uh, information about the player into this one file and it makes it a, uh, a lot easier for us to navigate. Okay, so since this only runs once, we do want this, the bottom, to update all the time. So I'm going to put that in my update and I want that to update every frame. So I want basically for us to fall down on the ground. Okay, so I can say if this dot bottom, the bottom of my player is say less than the height, that means I'm not touching the ground. That this would be my ground. If that's true, then um, I want to use that add force, the physics engine, and I want to add my gravity. Okay, now when I run, I shouldn't see anything, but that's because we never called that update function. So update. Now when I run, now I'm falling down to the ground. 
Okay, now it looks like I'm kind of going spongy in the ground. That's because uh, when it stopped, I was already below ground. So what I want is if I'm not already on the ground, okay, then I want to um, change my position. So here, and this could be cleaned up multiple different ways, but basically I want if I'm not in the air, so I'm not jumping, then I'm on the ground, which means that I want to reset what my Y position is to make it my height minus the radius of my character. Okay? This could be a, a hard value that you're passing, and this could be multiple things, and ultimately we could change this so that it would use that flag, that on-ground flag. Um, we also want to say that our on-ground we could start putting that in. We're true when we're on ground. Now let's fall. Okay, so now I'm sticking at the bottom because as soon as I'm no longer falling and that's one frame, it's going to reset to my correct position on the bottom. Okay, um, so now we want to implement um, something for us to jump. Okay, so we're going to use the move. And this is where we want to... Um, add, use the add force, but with the jump strength, okay, of our player. And so that will effectively make us fling up. So we do want to get the space bar as what we're going to use. So let's go into um, the references. We'll look at events. We're using keyboard controls. Okay, so ultimately, we're wanting to access the key codes. Um, we need to know what those values are. And with that, there's a site that we can access. We can find what, what our values are. So pressing spacebar, that is key 32. Okay, so I can check if my key code is equal to 32. That would be when I'm pressing the spacebar. So let's do that. Key code, one, two, three, because I want it to be exact. If it's equal to 32, then I want to apply my force. So I can say this dot add force and I'm adding this jump strength that is a part of my player and now I have this move but I actually have to call this. So I could call this after I'm sure that I am um, not on the ground. So I could call this here in my update. This is one place that I could call it. So then all I have to do in my sketch, I have that update, which would call anything that's necessary. So it's updating my values, and then I can call my move. All right, so now if I press spacebar, I jump up. However, I'm never going to come back down because the issue is that key code, once that fires, that always fires. So console.log key code, if I'm putting this in there, it's showing zero as soon as I hit spacebar. Um, it's still firing 32, so that is problem. So once we hit it, it's still going to fire. So we need to actually add a couple more things in here. We want it to fire that key code at 32, and um, we need to make sure that we are still pressing it. So this helps, but this is the other issue. I got Flappy Bird going, and it seems like my jump strength's um, off because sometimes when I press, I go high. Other times I don't. Okay, so I need to press the space bar, and I need to be actively pressing it, and I need my ground flag to be on. So this is what makes it so we can't double jump. This dot on ground um, needs to be true, okay? Which means that once I'm in here, I need to set it to false, meaning that I am no longer on ground. So now when we run... I can only jump here. Okay, now there's a couple things that we need to have. Our gravity is still being applied, um, and so there may be several frames that our gravity is much higher than what it's supposed to be. So if we do a console.log and we do this.velocity and we look at it, we're at zero. Now it's at 32. So that's pushing down much harder. So that means that our jump strength has having to overcome that gravity before it starts getting applied. So another thing that we want to do 
is inside of um, here. If we are on the ground, I need to reset that um, y velocity to zero, which would make it so that I'm not getting pushed down anymore. So then my jump should be a consistent height. Now, I feel like that is low, so we're going to tweak things. Um, and we can design the jump. You could play around with this, checking the apex where our velocity is zero. That means that we would be going a negative velocity to go up, a positive velocity to go down. We could check when that transitions. We could adjust the, the gravity. Um, we can do all kinds of stuff. So here I want to actually put higher jump strength. Let's jump. There we go. There's a higher jump strength. Um, I can also um, tweak the gravity. So if I tweak the gravity, we're at 2. If I go much smaller values, you're going to end up getting a floaty feel. So that's kind of slower. Um, and if I'm jumping too high in terms of my game, then I would tweak down the jump strength. But my fall is what I'm looking at. So let's say I do 0 0.5. Depending on your game, I don't know if I like that. Okay. Um, and you've got to make that determination. For right now, I'm going to leave it here, but that is what we're looking at. We're looking at having a consistent, predictable, good jump that looks realistic to you for your game. Okay? So we have this move. All this is doing is just firing this jump strength, um, and then we have our update. Okay, so now we are at the point, let's go ahead and save. Now we're at the point where we want to start building an animation. Okay. So we do know that we want to create another class. I'm going to call it animation.js. And mm, I need to go to my index. So because I'm going to have my player run the animations, I need to load the animation before I load my player so that I can pass in those type of animations. Okay. So inside my sketch, I can create a player and add animations to him. Um, so now let's go into our animations. We're going to use the keyword uh, class to let us know that we're creating a class. We'll call it animations. Um, we do have to have a constructor. Now there's a couple things that we need to make sure that we have uh, ultimately to make it look good for doing an animation. Um, because we're going to be adding animations to our player and we're switching back and forth, um, it would make it easier if we held on to like what type of animation. So if it's run idle or, or jump, um, it would be easy for us to search by it, for it by name. Um, we also want to add the list of images for that animation to build it. Um, we should be holding the subject so we can update the position of the animations in relation to um, whatever subject or the player that we're doing it. Um, and then if, if need be, we want to be able to put some offset um, stuff for the width and height of the animations and for um, the animations position in case that might be a little bit different than the actual um, subjects um, based off what we're looking at. So we're going to add those two. Offset X, offset Y, offset width, offset height, and then um, we want to give it the speed. Uh, that we would go through our frames, okay? And this ultimately makes it so that we would go through the frames um, faster or slower, depending on what type of animation. Um, we could also actually add stuff if we wanted it to be finished or ha only have it run a certain number of times. But let's go ahead and build these requirements and pass them to our, our class's attributes. When we create an animation, we're going to have to have specific attributes that's for that um, that object. So this dot type is type. This dot image list is image list. This dot subject is the subject. This dot offset, and ultimately this is going to be a vector. Create vector, and I'm going to pass in that offset x and the off set y. Um, our position, which is going to be a composite, um, so we're just going to do this right at the start. We need to know what our player's position is, and then we're going to need to add any of that offset 
but we do not know exactly, um, we don't need to know exactly what the player's position is, and we don't want to use vector math where we are adding it to um, the player's position or anything like that. So that's where we are going to want to use um, some static functions, okay? So here is a, this is us creating a normal vector, but if we want to create a P5 vector using static, um, we have different things that we can do. So uh, to show, we can create it um, where we're using the add function, but we're not actually adding to a specific uh, one that we're passing. We're just going to return the results and then we store it. So we're going to do uh, p5.vector and then we're adding the subjects position. Now we created our player. We know what um, that it has a position component and it is a vector. So we're going to add that vector to the offset that we just did. It's right here. Okay, that's going to output. It's going to add them together and it's going to output it, um, return it, and we're storing it as the position for our animation. Now that's just for the first time, so we have to update that if that could switch. Offset width equals offset width. Um, this dot offset height is equal to the offset height. And uh, a couple things for our animation. We're going to need to store whatever index number um, for which frame we're on. Um, and that's going to get computed to give us the, the frame that we should be on. So we need to hold those values. Okay, so this is our animation. Um, there's multiple things that we have to actually uh, have go in this first. So we are going to have to do an update. We're going to have to do a display. Um, we're going to need to have a couple other things in there. Um, if we're going to do some type of death animation or something that's not going to repeat, then we probably are going to want to also check if that animation is specifically finished um, and things like that. So let's do our update first. Update. And this is going to use some modulus as our math. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to basically recompute this so our position is accurate for every frame. Um, and then we want to take our index. Our index starts at zero, and then we are going to add to it, um, say, that speed. Okay, so we're going to add this dot speed. So if our speed was, say, four, we're going to add that to index. And then what we can do is... Um, we can pass in so we can use if it's one it means that it's running one frame a second if we want it to run slower than that we're running a number that is or excuse me um, every frame generation so 60 frames a second we would be running at, at one for our speed if we wanted it less than that um, then we're going to have to use uh, a decimal value um, which means that this will not be a whole number all the time so i need to check um, when it is a whole number, um, that it will stay within the bounds. So, like the first time, for example, I'm at zero plus, uh, let's say 0 0.3, if that's my an animation, that would be 0 0.3. And then the next time I would be at 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3, I'm now at 0 0.6. I'm going to keep going up, um, 6 plus 0 0.3, I'm now at 0 0.9. Last time, 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3, I'm at 1.2, okay? So this would be, um, in terms of where I'm at, I want to be loading the first image here that I'm storing at position 0, and then after that I want to be loading the image that's stored at 1 once I have that. So I'm building the, the computation algorithm to go through this and keep it for me. So inside here, we're going to take that num frame 
And first we're going to floor that value because we don't care if there's decimals. We just don't want it to, we need to know when it switches. So I'm going to floor the index that I'm, that I was adding the speed to. And then because I don't want it to go past um, the list of images that I have, I need to use modulus. So I'm going to do this image list dot length. I'm going to be passing in an image. So if I pass in six images, so my length would be six, then I'm going to be, say, zero modulus six. So I need to know if, what the remainder is. So this is going to keep telling me what remainder there is of everything. Okay. Um, and it will have a cycle through. Okay, so this is crucial for us to be able to run animations. Okay, ultimately our display, we want to display whatever that image is, and there's some things that I'm probably going to want to do. If I'm going to try to tint the image, if I'm going to try to have it flash certain colors, any of that stuff, um, I don't want it to affect anything else, so that means that I'm going to need to do push and pop and then have my stuff inside here. Um, I also want to make it easier for me to draw that image. So I want to change my image mode to center. That means that I could center it based off the center position of my player, which will make it much easier for me. Um, and then we're going to want to display. So we're going to display the image from that image list. Okay, so that's that image list. And it's going to be displaying um, based off of the frame that we computed. Okay. And then we're going to do it at this.position.x. And this is the position for the animation. And then this.position.y. That's the position uh, for the y position for our animation. We also want to add more. So if we're going to size up or size down our animation, we need to be passing that. So um, we're accessing our subject's width. And we are going to compute with that offset if we have one. So it could still be zero, and it's not going to mess it up. But if we need it to be larger or smaller than what our player is, we can tweak it without tweaking our player. Subject.height plus this dot offset height. I need to make sure that I'm typing each one of those. Yep. Okay. Um, so that would be for my display. Um, and then we got our other two little functions in here. One is going to be a reset. So if we need to call a reset, that would for our um, animation. If we finish that animation, we basically want to reset it back to the start of the animation. So that means that we don't want to have our index or a num frame computed on anything else. So we're going to set those back to zero. And then we need to have one more function that we can check if we're finished. So is finished. That seems clear. I can say if the floor of my index plus equals the speed. So I'm just computing um, the very last one. Okay. So if that is greater than the image list dot length minus one. So that'd be the very last position, the very last image. If that's greater than that last image, and I want to know the fractional, then it means that I've displayed that last image at least once. Um, so I can return true if I'm going to generate some type of death. That means I could transition to a new animation. And if it's not, then I'm writing an else and returning false. Okay. So this, basically, I can call it and find out if that animation's done if I don't want to cut the animation in half. All right, so that basically has everything that we need for our animation. Now what we really need to be able to do to start checking this is we got to build um, the images that we're going to do, okay? So to start off, I'm going to build a folder that I'm going to call 
player animations. So we're going to go here. And I'm just going to call it player animations. Okay. And then I want to put everything in here, the images. Now let's look at what we're doing. So I'm only doing the idle for you guys, but we have here is our idle animation. Seven, we get them blinking. 10, 11. Okay, so there is 11 frames. All right, so what we need to do, we're going to download these. I'm going to download. Now, if they zip them, I need to unzip them. Otherwise, it's going to cause some errors. Okay, so it finished, and it did zip it. All right, so I could just call these idle. Animations. I download them. I'm going to need to open these up and I'm going to have to extract them. So when I'm looking here, these are all compressed. If I try to drag these in, they're all going to error out. Okay. You have to extract um, your images so I can extract them and then it'll work. If you don't do this step, you're not, it's not going to throw an error, but it's not going to understand what you're trying to do. So here's all my animations. Notice how they all are numbered sequentially, idle, underscore, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, two, zero, zero, three. Okay, we want to basically load those programmatically um, without having to load each one individually. We want to just do it in the preload. Okay, so that's what basically we're going to do, and we need to add all of these in there. So, for my player animations, I need to click the correct drop down. I'm going to upload a file, okay, and then I'm just dragging these. So, from the start one to the end one, I'm going to drag them in here. we should see them populate in here. If they don't populate in this folder, you're going to probably want to delete and then redo because your animations will get seriously insane um, having all of these different pictures for characters and enemies and everything. Okay, so there it is. There is my animations um, and me organizing like this. If I have other ones that have simple names, it would make it easy for me to pull out what I need. Okay, so once I see all of them on there, I don't need to wait it on here anymore. Okay, so now I have that, um, I'm going to need to go to my sketch. And so this is one of the things that we're going to end up having to do. So we load a player. Um, now we need to load um, animations. Okay, so here we're going to create, um, let's just call it player idle anim um, for my player idle animation. Okay, and that's going to be basically that image list of all of those things that we need to pass in. All right, we're also going to need to have a preload function to load the images to block that loading so it's not going to cause any errors. So here we want to start off where we're going to load. I need this to be an empty list. And then I can use a for loop to go through um, change using a string literal and basically build this out so that it will change that last number to 0, 1, 2, everything up to 11, okay? Um, so that's what we're going to play around with. For let i equals 0, and then we want i to go up to... Um, up to an equal 11. I plus plus. I already see a potential issue from what I've done previously. All right, so idle animation. We need to push each one of those. Okay, now we've done the load 
image and we've stored it as a variable, but in this case, we're just putting it in that list. I don't need to have this stored as a variable for anything. So I'm just going to say load image, and then I need to point to using string literals, so the back tick. I need to point to that player animations folder. Um, slash, and then I'm going to write idle underscore zero zero. Uh, actually, let's just do one zero. Then we're going to use dollar sign, and this is what we're going to fill in for our I. Okay, so that should be replacing, and then we'll do dot PNG. Okay, I want to see that that's doing it. So inside of this loop right here, that should be loading it. I want to see what that is saying. Okay, so I'm going to do console.log because I think there's going to be an issue with the naming convention as we're doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and run. Okay, so it did air out a little bit. So that one's fine. Zero, 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 one, zero, two. I want it to say one more zero, but then these last two are correctly done. Okay, so I can change this just a little bit um, and say that I want it to have two zeros, but then that's not going to work for 10 and 11. Okay. So that means that I can load this and I could put a small if conditional on there and just say if I is less than 10, then we want to run this version, which would be this one. Okay, so I move that here. Otherwise, else it's not less than 10, then I want to run the version with only one zero so it's correctly populated because that would be I would be 10 and then I would be 11 okay so now let's run okay no errors <laughs> so that's good so we correctly loaded it Okay, um, because 0 to 9, we do want those two zeros, so that would show up. And then when we get here, we only want one zero, and then we're replacing with I. So we've loaded all of this on here. Once we finish, we can check um, console.log player idle anim.length. Whoa. It helps if I spell it correctly. 12. 0 to 11, that would be 12. And now I got some other console.log code that I need to get rid of. So it's correctly loading right now. Um, so now I can actually, with my player, I can um, add that animation. Okay? So when we create our player, we want to be able to add that animation, which means now we're going to have to go to our player and we're going to have to make some changes um, because we want some type of function that's going to allow us to add a animation to the player. So inside of our player, um, which means we're going to have to come back here, we're going to need to load this animation, okay? I'm just going off my notes. Um, so we're going to add a couple couple new functions on here. We're going to have an add animation, and we're going to need to have a, and that will be an actual animation that we're putting in there. Um, and so then we need to have 
a list of animations that our player is holding on to. So let's do this dot animations and that equals an empty list and then let's add a current animation and we'll start that as null right now. Um, so then our very first animation that will become our new one. All right, so inside that add animation, we basically want to take that animations list. We push that animation onto it, so that's pretty simple. We want to be able to change our animation, um, which means we need to go through, of that animation, um, we need to go through all of them and check the type. So... we should make sure that there is a matching animation type um, and that it will let us know if we have an error. So I'm going to use a for of loop. So we're going to look for an animation of this list of animations. Inside of here, we want to check if the animation type is equal to the animation type that we're looking for. So if we say change to run, we're looking for that animation in that list. If it is um, if we already have an animation, then we should reset our animation. So um, if this is true inside here, if this is true, then we might have an animation that we already are using. So we can look for that. If our animation is not null, that means that we have something there, then we're going to want to reset that one before we move off. So we're going to call that reset function that we just previously wrote, and then um, we want to reset to whatever this new animation that matched, okay, as our new current animation. So we're going to say this.current animation is the animation. All right. Um, now, for uh, the animations, that's good. Now we need to actually display, though. Um, inside of display, we have this circle, but we also want to be able to display the animations. Okay, so the player is going to be pulling the animations that it needs, but the animation class is what's going to be um, running those animations. So I'm going to say if the current animation is not null, then I want it to run. So I'm going to say this dot current animation. We're going to use the update for the animation. And then we want to display current animation dot display. Okay, so these are just calling whatever that animation is because they're all built the same way with the same class. They're all going to have an update and a display. And so this is just going to fire when we have an animation. Okay. So now um, we're at the point where we could go to our sketch and we've created a player. That player exists. Now we can add that animation. Okay. So we could say player dot add animation and we want to add a new animation and we can call it um, idle we need to um, pass in that image list so this would be the player um, idle anim uh, we need to pass in a when we're looking here, we need to pass in the subject, the one who is a part of these animations. So in this case, this would be the player. Um, and then we're doing our offset X, offset Y, offset width, offset height, and the anim speed. So we may not have anything for those. So in this case, let's do 0, 0. Um, we could do... Uh, 0, 0 for the width and height, and then let's give him, I don't know, 0 0.5 for his animation speed, okay? That 
adds the animation to the player, um, and then the player is going to be updating to whatever that current animation is. Now, we don't have one set, so we are going to use uh, 